Maintaining priorities. Whatever decisions we make as believers, we should consider how these decisions will enable us to serve the Lord Jesus Christ more effectively. Here's Dr. Gene Getz. The word serve here is a very key concept, I think, in relationship to what Paul is trying to communicate, the essence of what Paul is trying to communicate. Now, without a certain amount of background, it's difficult to really understand exactly what the issues were, but uh, as you get more and more understanding of what was going on in this church and in this city, uh, we, can, uh, we can understand this a little more clearly. So let me uh, give you a few insights, hopefully. First of all, he said about virgins. Now we see the word virgins in English. We have our particular interpretation of what that means, our particular meaning of that word. In reality, as he's using it here in the Greek text, it means about men and women of marriageable age. That's basically what he's talking about here. Now later he uses, the word is translated virgins, refers to women, but here it's really uh, both men and women of, of marriage, uh, of age that uh, could be married, marriageable age. He says, I have no command from the Lord about this. In other words, he's saying, I had not received a report from Peter or anyone else that Jesus said anything about this while he was on the earth. But I do give an opinion as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. And of course, Paul was an apostle and had some significant communication from the Lord uh, and a lot of wisdom. And so he says, therefore, I consider this to be good because of the present distress. It is fine for a man to stay as he is. In other words, if you choose not to marry, that's fine. Are you bound to a wife? And that was another issue that they were really confused about. We talked about that last time. They said, if we're bound to a wife, should we get divorced? Because now we're Christians. That, that's how confused they were about this whole issue. And Paul addressed those issues, of course. We saw that in a previous paragraph. Are you bound to a wife? Don't seek to be loosed. Are you loose from a wife? Do not seek a wife. However, now, basically, uh, Paul refuses to uh, buy in to the group in that church that were promoting being celibate. Even though Paul was not married, he understood that wasn't God's normal way. And, uh, and even though he wished people had his gift so they could be free to, to minister more effectively, he said that's really not, that's not the way God intended it to be in a normal situation. He says, however you do get married, you have not sinned. There's some that thought if they go ahead and get married, they're in living in sin. That's how confused they were. Uh, for us who know the Bible and understand the values of Christianity, we say, how stupid can you be? Well, they were just totally pagan and with the most distorted views of, of man and woman and men and men and women and women. It was a totally confused situation. If a virgin here he's talking about now, a single woman marries, she's not sinned. It's not wrong. But such people will have trouble in this life. He's just being very realistic. And I'm trying to spare you that. He said, uh, in essence, I wish you could be single, but that's, that's my calling, not your calling. And uh, marriage brings with it additional responsibilities, additional issues that you have to deal with. And he said, I'd, I'd rather you didn't have to face those situations. But uh, he can, continues on and says, if any man think he's acting improperly toward his virgin, and here again, that language can be very confusing. It really refers to a woman here, in this case, an unmarried woman, and if she is past marriageable age. In other words, she's an older woman. And so it must be, he can do what he wants. He can get married. He said, that's fine. He's not sinning. They can get married. Uh, again, you say, how in the world did they, you know, what were they thinking? Well, they were thinking with distorted perspectives. They didn't understand God's plan. But he who stands firm in his heart, who's under no compulsion, has control of his own will, is deciding his heart to keep his own version, in other words, not to marry, will do well. In other words, to remain unmarried, but pure, obviously. So then he who marries his virgin does well. He who doesn't marry will do better, as far as Paul was concerned. That was his point of view. A wife is bound as long as her husband is living, and here he talks now about another issue, and that's divorce. But if her husband dies, she's free to be married to anyone she wants, only in the Lord, in other words, don't turn around and marry a pagan, marry a Christian. 
But she is happier if she remains as she is. In my opinion, he says, and I think that I also have the Spirit of God when I say that, he said. So Paul is giving interpretation, opinion as he writes here. At the same time, he is under the direction of the Holy Spirit. So uh, basically, the principle that he's really getting at here is this, and let me just state it again. Whatever decision we make as believers, we should consider how these decisions will enable us to more effectively serve the Lord Jesus Christ. If to serve Him, to marry and to serve Him is, is the desire of our heart, that's what we can do. If we want to remain single and serve the Lord, we can do that. But the important issue here is just serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether we're married or unmarried, make sure that our heart is to serve Jesus Christ. Now, having said this, um, and, and looked at this passage, uh, I raise this question for application. Though Paul concentrates on some of the advantages of serving God as a single person, and he does that in this passage. Uh, and of course, I have shared with you, basically, my own opinion about Paul, and that is, and this is just my opinion, that he was divorced. Uh, and that is based on the fact that he was a Jewish young man raised in a Jewish home. Uh, he was a tent maker by trade, and every young Jewish boy learned a trade, but every young Jewish boy, one of the first goals of his father was to get him a wife. It would have been very unusual if Paul didn't have a wife. Uh, my own opinion is that once he came back to Tarsus as a believer, after having met Jesus on the Damascus Road, that he was rejected by his whole family. His Jewish father, his Jewish mother, his wife, and everyone within the Jewish circles rejected him. He was a non-being. And I don't think he directs that, addresses that directly. My theory is when he talks about if an unbeliever wants to leave, you let her leave. If an unbeliever and husband wants to leave, you can't force them to stay. I think that might be autobiographical. Can't prove it, but it's a possibility. So Paul is speaking out of his own experience here in relationship to, to, um, to his calling. But the question is this, though Paul concentrates on some of the advantages of serving God as a single person, and he does, what are the offsetting advantages, biblically and pragmatically? Now, I have met people who've said, <laughs> I'd never marry again. <laughs> uh, that's a bad scene. But uh, notice I say, uh, what are the advantages of being married to a godly spouse and having a well-ordered family? Well, let me take the other side, and Paul, if you're listening, and I don't think you are, let me, give, <laughs> let me give you my opinion. But my opinion, not just on your opinion, but on what you said in other portions of Scripture. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> some of the advantages is, are, and I think most of us who are, are, who are privileged to have godly spouses, it enhances our leadership responsibilities uh, in the church. Uh, that's the basis of a well-ordered family is the basis of being able to serve the Lord in a church more effectively. Uh, oneness in Christ that God created. It is a unity and a uniqueness and a oneness that reflects God Himself. And God designed that and created that intimacy. Uh, the uh, mutual support of each other. And, uh, you know, behind every great man, they say, is a great woman and vice versa. And I know in my own life, not that I'm such a great man, but I'll tell you one thing. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing and have done what I've done without my wife in terms of her support, her love. I've talked with a lot of individuals who don't have that kind of support, and it's tough going. That's real tough going. Uh, and I've seen God's grace at work in people's lives under those circumstances, and they achieve things that I couldn't achieve, and they have better attitudes than I have in some respects. But the fact of the matter is, it's a great blessing. And then, you, you know, who can, as a grandfather, uh, not talk about the blessing of children and grandchildren. Uh, one of the greatest blessings that God has given to anyone is to have children and grandchildren. I'm very fortunate, Elaine and I are very fortunate to have our grandchildren 
all living in this, in this particular area and I've got to have my grandchild fix every week or I, I'm in trouble. Uh, but uh, that's, that's a great blessing. Uh, obviously, uh, with the multiplication of children and grandchildren, it also brings challenges, heartache, pain that goes with all of that. But we live in a fallen world. So basically, uh, the whole issue here, uh, whether married or unmarried, is that Paul is saying we ought to maintain priorities. And that priority is to make sure Christ is first and we need to serve Him. And of course, serving our family is also serving Jesus Christ. Serving our employee, or employers, as Paul addresses later, is also serving Jesus Christ. 